Okay, Ascon, <clears throat> one of the winners of the Caesar competition, as designed by Christoph Dobranik, Maria Eisleder, Florian Mendel, and Martin Schlaffer. So it is a sponge construction. This was one of my favorites in the competition, and you know I tried to provide many analysis results throughout the Caesar competition, and I'm still, you know, uh, providing some analysis results. So far, I haven't broken uh, the whole cipher, but I provided good results for the five rounds of the cipher. Okay, so the block size can be 64 and 28, 128 bits. There are two variants, but only one of them is submitted as the principal uh, algorithm for the NIST lightweight competition. State size is 320 bits. So this is a sponge function and your internal state is 320 bits. Your secret key can be 128 bits. At the beginning of the Caesar competition, there was a version that supported 96 bits, but then they were removed. Since in the NIST competition, this much security is not enough. The nose is 128 bits. The produce tag is 128 bits. Rounds uh, depends on the uh, process you are doing. If you initial it, the initialization, you perform 12 rounds. In the encryption, you use six rounds and so on. I will show it with a picture. So the properties of ASCON is as follows. It is a single pass algorithm. So with the single pass over the data, you both provide ciphertext and the tag. This is the good thing. It is online, inverse free. It has a security proof. It is lightweight, fast in software and hardware because uh, you know uh, the bit operations can be done in a very fast way in software. No table lookup. This is important because I will show you in the slide that it ha actually has an S box. So it actually uses a table lookup operation, but that S box chosen in a way that you can implement it with like 21 XOR operations or something. So instead of table lookup, you can convert that S box into XOR operations. This is very important in lightweight algorithms because instead of table lookup, you are performing XOR operations, which actually uh, done as in terms of timing or power analysis, this provides you security against side channel attacks. Okay. We will see in detail when we talk about ASCON. So the whole picture of ASCON is as follows. You have the initialization phase. Recall that our internal state was 320 bits. So initially you fill it with IV, your secret key and nodes. So 128 bit, 128 bit. So you end up with 64 with IB. So you fill the internal state with this and you perform your permutation, your sponge function, A many times and A is 12. So you mix the internal state. Here you XOR this 30, 320 bit internal state with your secret key concatenated with zeros at the beginning. And this is your initialization phase. Now you are ready to encrypt. If you have associated data, you feed your associated data uh, R bits here. This is your rate. So you XOR R bits of your internal state with this block. Perform the permutation six many times. Keep counting, adding your associated data. But if you don't have any associated data, you can just erase this part and move from initialization to plain text part. So you XOR your plain text uh, in the default standards R is 64 bits. So you XOR 64 bits with the 320 bits internal state. So you XOR at the top of it and provide cipher text block from here. You perform permutation again at the plain text block, provide cipher text block. So this way you keep producing cipher text blocks. So you are actually using a sponge function as a block cipher. But once you produce every cipher text, so you perform permutation on your internal state again, also exhort with your key and provide the tag, okay? In order to understand this picture, let's look at what is P and come back again, okay? So let's look at this uh, operation that we perform 12 times, okay? We call this P permutation. So since the internal state of ASCON is 320 bits, we represented it with 
five rows and 64 columns. This way it makes 320 bits. So I represent the rows with X0, X1, X2, X3, and X4. At each round, you start with adding cost, constants to these uh, seven bits, okay? And the constants are simple as like this. Sorry, eight bits, yeah. So you add the constants. At the zero round, you add this constant. Then you perform SBox operation to every column. Since you have 64 columns, you apply the SBox operation 64 times. And since you have five rows, actually you have five bit input and five bit output, right? So this is your SBox. As you can see, it takes values from zero to 31. So depending on your five bit input, you look at this table, you look at the result and write it back here. Now look at this input, find it here, write the output there. So as you can see, you have to perform 64 SBox operations. And you know, uh, taking this five bit value from rows might take some time. Good thing is that, as I told you before, actually the SBox operation uh, is uh, defined as like 21 XOR operations on these XIs. So since it is defined on this XIs, instead of performing those operations on bits, you can perform those operations on rows. So instead of 64 table lookups, you can perform all of these SBox operations in 21 XOR operations. We will see in our implementation. So this is for confusion. Okay, now it is time for diffusion because here we are operating on the columns. Now I, what we do is a diffusion on rows. So you take this first row, X0, write it here, rotate it 19 bits to the right, rotate it 28 bits to the right, and exhort these three values and write it here back. So this way you provide diffusion. And that's it. This is your one round. It consists of adding a constant, performing SBox, performing rotations. Repeat this 12 times. For instance, recall that our initialization started with IV, concatenated with key, and concatenated with nodes. So IV is 64 bit, you write it at the top row. Your key is 128 bit, you write it to these two rows, and you write your nodes to these two rows, okay? So you perform these operations. Whenever you want to produce ciphertext, so you divide your plain text into 64 bit blocks, you exhort it with the top row and produce the output as ciphertext block. Repeat this process again on the internal state here. Then again, take the next block and provide the ciphertext. And at the end, you perform the permutation again. But this time, from the bottom two rows, you exhort it with your secret key and provide the tag. So at the single pass, you are taking the associated data, you are providing ciphertext and providing tag. So since the IV is fixed, your secret key is fixed, if you use the same nodes, this means that you're always having the same results here. So this can break the system. So you have to choose a different nodes for different encryption operation, okay? So if you use the same nodes, we call it nodes misuse. And as far as I know, ASCON do not claim uh, security against nodes misuse, okay? It is assumed that you are using different nodes because it somewhat works like a stream cipher. So using the same nodes will provide same internal state and this way you can break the system. So this is why you have to use, change the nodes every step, but you can keep using the same secret key and IV is fixed and you perform these operations and obtain this result.